This episode of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Go check them out at getjobber.com slash breakthrough to receive 20% off your first six months. Content marketing is an essential marketing segment that allows you to stand out from the crowd. So in this episode, we're going to talk about some of the key pillars of content marketing, where if you do them right, you're going to accelerate your brand. What's up, everyone? Mark Roberti here, host of the Breakthrough Success podcast and radio show, where we interview entrepreneurs, goal achievers, and people who have a story of success to share. And we are joined by a guest who is the head of marketing over at Printful, which is one of the marketing market's leading print on demand and drop shipping businesses with over 700 employees in five fulfillment centers. The company has fulfilled more than 13 million items since its founding in 2013. And our guest has been a big part of that. So he is none other than Rightus Curtis, right? This welcome to the show. Welcome, glad to be on the show. Thanks. I'm so happy to have you on Breakthrough Success. And content marketing is a big platform. Like I'm a big advocate for that type of marketing, and getting those key pillars right is very important. So I'm wondering if we could start by uh, just identifying what those pillars are, and then we could go deeper into each individual pillar. So first of all, uh, the first pillar I would like put as the main one is, of course, uh, SEO, search engine optimization. So you have to look uh, on the content marketing through that. So basically, when you do it right, uh, you are the answer to the people questions online, then you will just get the traffic uh, to your website, basically free traffic and uh, your business organically, organically will grow. You don't have to invest so much on the ads. So that is the main key pillar. And when you talk about content marketing, uh, it's, it's not something you can build immediately. It's a long-term investment. So you can't, you can't expect immediate results. So if you do it right, uh, so over the time, you'll see that people will just come to your website more and more and more. And uh, in this case, it's uh, really important to remember that the quality is uh, the key factor here. You can do a lot of content, but if you will not invest in quality content, making sure that instead of four like bad articles to be written really quickly, that you have one good article, this could be the best working solution. So it's basically the key, key pillar, which has to go through whole your marketing funnel. And uh, our key success is that it's, it's not something that just one person can do. Very often you just look at your SEO, head of SEO. So what can you do? And my, in our case, we have, I believe, more than 20 content writers writing in English and other languages. So in total, the marketing team is almost is currently exactly 50 people, including the devs. So it's a big crowd. And it's, you can't imagine that the one person will do any, everything for the SEO. And our factor is that that head of SEO, he's driving everyone else to remind them, reminding them, them how important the SEO is. What, what can you what kind of, you can benefit if you do it right if you remember that SEO is key factor in any product launch any new landing page any new blog article and if uh, that's if that's done right then uh, you will just see that results you don't have to spend time I know promoting your blog articles or reddit or other groups it will just start working uh, themselves just seeing coming traffic from from, from search engines and Search engines gave you that ability to, you know, have, as uh, Wright has said, that ability to just have the traffic come in versus you have to do a lot of promotional work. Now, it is great to do promotional work either way, but being able to master an algorithm like Google or like YouTube allows that traffic to just keep pouring in. So I'm wondering what goes into that? What goes into your keyword process? Because I know that's one of the bigger factors with ranking on any algorithm. So uh, in the uh, keyword factor, of course, it's, uh, first of all, it comes from the person inside, in, working inside a company. So nobody will, uh, no tool will just say that you have to rank for these, for these 
uh, keywords. You have to figure out how people would search for this product. For, for example, you can look at uh, custom leggings, for example, uh, the pretty popular product which our customers are selling through their st on their stores. Have to be in their shoes, figure out who could look for uh, leggings. It could be athletic leisure. It could be a custom gift. It could be a gift uh, for anyone who's spending a lot of time at home. For example, you're working from office. It's pretty good uh, apparel product to wear while you're working from home, uh, stuff like that. So you have to get into the and uh, and customer shoes that you figure out what could potentially the person could uh, look for. And then uh, when you figure out the base, then you put uh, other keywords around it. And it's not just about the keywords. After end of day, you have to think about internal linking, how you link, uh, where you put the right links. Uh, maybe you write it on not just a landing page, you write also a blog article about similar topic. You add more content, which could help you uh, push, uh, push your uh, website higher in the results. So it's uh, many, many factors. And let's just start with the keywords. And end of the day, it's uh, so many things in between. And you can't just think about getting a new traffic. So you have to also think about conversion rate. So I'm really lucky that my team is not just thinking about getting traffic. So I have to rank for this keyword. But when you get the traffic, you have to figure out how you can convert that user who visits your website. So first, in some cases, it's a purchase, sometimes registration, and then uh, email marketing comes into place, which actually is also a content marketing because with your email sending at the right time, uh, triggered by right triggers on your website and put, putting there the right content, pursuing them to do that or one thing or another thing, is a huge, huge funnel. And another day, you, you can talk also about conversion rate optimization, and this is just next step after you acquire a customer through any channel. In this case, SEO, ads, or and, and any other channel which you can imagine on, inter on the internet. And it's interesting you mentioned just do a bunch of keywords. When you find the one that works for you, just create some keywords around that. So for my YouTube channel, which is a lot on self-publishing and YouTube, like I'm doing a lot of keywords around self-publishing because that's the area that works best for me. And... I like, um, from my perspective, like you do have to, you know, once you find something that works, go more specific into there. What advice would you have for people who think that they have to go broad? They think they need to hit on all these different keywords instead of going sp to uh, specific. Um, yeah, there are two strategies, uh, but uh, it's probably I could, I could um, give a comparison from real life. So uh, I'm working 40 hours a week. I have probably 2,000 different ideas which I like to test with my team. And I can, I can just test uh, as many as I can fit in those 40 hours or, or a longer period of time. So you have to put the priorities on place. And if you have top five keywords, put the resource in top three keywords. You see that those people will, uh, where they will look for that particular keyword, they will feel maybe a need to actually use your tool, use your service as well. So uh, actually it's better that you, progress. so I will, I will start again my, my idea, sorry for that. So uh, you have to think about which is the most valuable keyword because probably people looking for, I know, custom leggings or custom t-shirts or maybe custom backpacks. It depends, there's different competition as well. So meaning that where you are the most competitive, so maybe you don't have the best prices for t-shirt. Maybe you have a, a best, better price for leggings compared to your competitors. So you have to figure out all the time, well, you have to prioritize because then you also get the outcome which you need. Otherwise, you probably can get a lot of traffic from all those keywords, but on which keywords or which traffic sources you will convert better. So that's probably my, my, my thinking on that. That's a really great approach because you, as content creators, we always have so many different ideas. Like I could create so many different videos on so many different topics, but it's a matter of picking what's the videos that are going to rank the best for me and also have the most potential to bring back income. So those are just some of the things you have to think about when you are picking keywords and creating content, but knowing the keywords isn't enough. That's just a starting point because you know the keyword, now you have to go out there and actually create the content. So how do we create content that gains traction on Google 
and keeps the reader or consumer interested? High quality content. So basically the one approach how we can look at that, if you will write that content, if there's something you can actually learn from that. So it's a matter of time of uh, research that you can put the right content. Because probably there's thousand topics I could write on, but I'm not expert on those topics. So you can do the research or there's just topics you just feel much more comfortable creating content around that. Uh, for example, example from our field, uh, as a print on demand, dropshipping is pretty new business model and not so many people actually know that it's so easy to launch your e-commerce merch store. That we are thinking about the topics who could be interested in uh, our potential audience. Uh, we have a pretty good blog article, DTG versus screen printing and ranking, which compares two printing methods so you can get a design on a t-shirt. It's not generally something that uh, we offer. Screen printing is not something we offer to print on demand model because it's not possible. But uh, educating our potential, uh, potential audience, someone who is looking for that, probably has some understanding about printing world, maybe he wants to print a t-shirt, we get the people inside our website uh, around, around the topic. So it's now the next step, how we can actually make the person be interested in our service. So it's topic we are pretty familiar with. We know everything about DTG. We did the research about screen printing, but that's key factor for business. And then uh, we see that there's potential ranking on that topic. Like maybe there's not such good content around it. You can just make it better. So it's also one of the factors you can do. You look at the content, see maybe it's not, we're working and it's not enough high quality, you can just do better. In one of the cases, I know it's not maybe a popular strategy, but if you see that there's you know, five Photoshop Adobe alternatives, you can do 10 Adobe Photoshop mm -hmm. alternatives. It's also one of the strategies you can uh, look at that, but it's not such a popular one as well. We have more great content coming up in this episode, but first we have a message from today's sponsor, Jobber. Jobber's award-winning software helps small home service businesses organize their entire operations from scheduling jobs and managing their crews to invoicing customers and collecting payments. That way, you can spend more time on the services you're already great at. Job by job, business by business, Jobber is transforming the ways their customers deliver service. Start your free trial over at getjobber.com slash breakthrough. All right, let's get right back into the episode. And the common strategy that uh, was popularized by Neil Patel is this idea of writing 2,000 words at least for each blog post to rank on page one. Is that something you guys do or are you doing less than 2,000 words? Uh, it's, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that we have like minimum amount of the words, but it can't be one pager for sure. So sometimes uh, it's actually could be strategy. Uh, the longer is the article, the better it will work. And uh, it's not always the case. Uh, one factors which you're looking on is to get into those snippets. So basically when you're looking DTG versus screen printing difference, you can get into the snippet that you're a top result, that even people don't have to visit your website, but you are there. Another factor is that very often you look for the questions, there's a drop down on Google results, like what's the difference and what's the, uh, what's the best t-shirt quality? And there's answers right into your search engine. And it's not something you can also optimize. And in that case, it's not always about the length. It's about uh, putting the right words and um, done everything well in the back end that the Google can read your website correctly. Because it's uh, one of the keywords, but there's so much technical stuff into that. I know just uh, website speed and there's uh, such a, so many secretly things which people assume that it works and it's going to work can test, test, test. So it's not... Uh, as our requirement is not length, it's basically is the quality of the content. The people will spend time on your website and they'll feel see that it's something valuable that they have read. And I mean, time spent on website is definitely a big thing Google looks at. I know it's something YouTube looks at as well. And in addition to, is it really just high quality content and, uh, loading speed that really affects how long people spend on your website or is there another factor in there? Of course, there's probably so many factors we wouldn't like have all the time to even mention them. So one factor we look at is also the CTR on the Google website. So basically making sure that the title and the description we see on the link is also high quality. 
one strategy you can look into that is uh, putting emoji there. That could get some attention and you can check different results there. Maybe they don't include that there as well. And uh, like uh, probably there's so many technical stuff. I'm not the, probably the expert I can talk on. There's SEO team who's doing that. But it's basically making sure that uh, people are engaged with your content. High quality doesn't mean that some kind of expert has written that, but it has to be easy to read, easy to understand. Maybe add some extra um, engagement uh, engagement ways for them. So one of the factors we look on our blog is that making sure that people subscribe to our blog. As an e-commerce store, you can offer some kind of discount to them to make the first purchase. But as we are targeting e-commerce sellers and we are educating them, so we are offering some kind of freebie. I know we had a blog article about e-commerce calendars. So what we offer them that you can uh, download it as a PDF and you can put notes, print and print it out and put notes, uh, notes, reminders for yourself. And for, for you to do that is to, you, you leave our email address and you, and you, uh, and we can then work with him again and again, making sure that he maybe starts using our service, not just reads our content as well. And, there's, and another strategy when you look at the blog articles, there could be different ones. So uh, we're thinking of also next steps. So we are putting in categories of blog articles. One is pre-awareness funnel, for example. Then it's a different call to action for them to make the next step. So basically making sure that he reads more about Printful. What do we do? What is our service? And there's some post-awareness uh, blog articles as well because we are pretty sure that the person who is reading how to start your own t-shirt e-commerce business, they already may be a little bit more familiar with our company and stuff like that. So we uh, sell them a different value on the blog article, making sure that they go to the website and create an account there. I mean, it's interesting all these different factors that can really come into play for ranking better on search engines, for increasing that user uh, experience. And one of the other things I want to get into is the SEO. Can, it's one of those like, you know, long-term games where once you get it going, it gets going really fast, but it's just getting there is the issue. And in the meantime, you still have to get traffic to your content. So what are some of the things you're doing outside of SEO to drive traffic to your content? Uh, of course, uh, one is uh, paid ads. So we are spending a lot of money there as well because as the business model is pretty new, uh, it's not enough if you want to continue to grow to actually uh, just survive with the uh, organic results because you have to let people know that you exist there in the field, that there's something like that. So one is ads. Uh, we are spending a lot of money on Facebook and Instagram and of course on Google as well because there's uh, one thing you have to make sure that people, other people are not bending on your brand name. So you have to basically mm -hmm. make sure that you are getting your traffic, which actually had deserved it. You have to pay Google to make sure that you still get your traffic on when someone is searching for Printful. And um, so, of course, social media as well but it's more i believe and we look at that that is more of a channel to work uh, with our current customer base reminding them what we offer and uh, we believe it's more about the brand awareness actually for them uh, and uh, making sure that we uh, communicate that we have new products and stuff like that and the third channel is your partners um, uh, we have uh, our app on a shop for app store we have our app on the Wix. We have on different big commerce Weebly. So uh, it's, uh, that's also the place where customers find us as there as well. And it's, it's another place where content plays huge role. Because for example, in Shopify, they off, there are several print-on-demand apps. You have to make sure that your app is visible uh, and it's easy for them to compare, choose you instead of maybe a competitor. So one thing is general content you can put there on. I know these are my value proposition, what we can offer. And another huge factor is social proof. So if there's a place you can leave a review, it plays huge role in, uh, when, when the customer decides which platforms they want to go with. So when we make sure that we add the review at the right time, when people feel that they will leave us the maximum amount of the stars, it can't be the way that you push them, give us five stars and we'll give you a freebie. 
we just asking the right time when we feel that the customer uh, could be potentially five stars. So it's also pretty, pretty important in that factor as well. And uh, it's not just about written content. Uh, you also mentioned YouTube a lot. So in our case, you're also investing a lot of time in uh, video resources. One factor, one, one content is manuals, how to actually use Printful. But lately, uh, I think it's been a year when we actually started doing the pretty active. We are creating a lot of, lot of general content, general e-commerce content, which makely trying to make sure the same with the blog. I know how to price your products. It's not just something uh, just print on demand customers are looking for, but it's everyone on e-commerce. Uh, we could get our eyes on the Printful brand that we are there, this high quality company who's creating high quality content, which helps them sell more. And uh, I wouldn't say that's a content marketing strategy, but um, uh, I have mentioned a lot of the quality factor into the business. It's one thing you can look at the quality content, quality product, but in our case, it's also quality customer support. So and then, uh, very often, if you offer high quality customer support, it's also generates a great word of mouth. You can probably also see on Twitter that this company are doing amazing customer support. If they have an experience pretty good with uh, my support team, probably it's high chance that they will suggest to use my company also to others. This is a great company who's helped with my business needs. So it's generally just word of mouth for your company and it also gets you free traffic. You don't have to go on Google to actually use you and they will just suggest you, hey, this is Printful and make sure that you add the right time. And the last factor is also affiliate program. So if you can't make content yourself, it's if you create amazing affiliate program and partners who want to work with you, then they will do the content for you basically because um, our, our, our program is made that affiliates get paid when the customers they uh, acquire for us starts getting sales. So they also have to spend a lot of time educating them, making sure that they actually are the audience who can sell that. Thing. So they are putting the blog articles, video for you, turning traffic to your website. And I mean, there's just so much in there. Just the idea that, you know, you want to, you start super narrow. Maybe you broaden up a little bit based on your niche. I mean, that's just what principle has been able to do very well. And, uh, it's just a matter of taking insights from this episode and applying them one at a time to your content marketing strategy and starting to see gradual results. For people who want to follow you on your journey, where do we go? Uh, <laughs> probably uh, put your ideas on a huge list. Uh, whatever tasks or ideas you have on your list and uh, figure out, I think the easiest way is to put in a and the, that small diagram when you put the idea on it and figure out how much time it will take for you to actually do the idea and what could be the potentially outcome of you working on this idea. So if the idea you see that huge, huge potential will take you a few minutes to do, do it immediately. And then you can also start at the same time working on ideas which will probably get the most for you but it takes the most longer, longer time to actually execute that. So you have to split your time, I don't know, in days and hours, whatever it takes for you to actually allocate resource to that. And you have to go one by one. So uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the multitasking. It will not get you anywhere. So yeah, if you have to either. concentrate on one thing at a time, you do that, you move to the next one. Otherwise, you'll try to do everything at the same time. It will be crazy for you. And especially when you're just getting started, it's something you can have to constantly avoid. You get one thing, you move to the next one. And if you feel that something is working, scaled up. It's the easiest way. So either you have to start spending more money into that, you have to start hiring more people or maybe hire freelancers who can do for that. And uh, maybe start investing more time in the ads and maybe blogs, maybe do something on email marketing or look in the channels you can do. So that could be probably my suggestion when you're just getting started. So do it slowly and one by one. And I, I really do like that approach um, because then you get to see which ideas are working the best for you. Um, I know uh, 
write us uh, is over at Printful. So we will have a link down in show notes for anyone who wants to follow uh, Printful, see all the awesome content there. But I do want to thank you so much for joining us on Breakthrough Success. It was a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Have a great day. This episode of the Breakthrough Success Podcast was brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Start a free trial or sign up today to receive 20% off your first six months. Find out more at getjobber.com slash breakthrough.